Assalamu alaikum everyone. So this episode is a very exciting one. It is on a very, very, very big topic. This is going to be a guide to sabr, a guide to patience. And it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot. I honestly can't tell you how long this episode might be. It might just be 22 minutes and then like, I don't know, or maybe an hour. I don't know. I'm just going to talk about the things that have helped me develop sabr and help change my life. This kind of reminds me of like the older episodes that I used to film before where I used to take like one topic and just run with it and talk about all the other things underneath it such as like okay you're going through depression let's talk you know a little bit about that and stuff like that and I have talked about sabr a lot before on smaller scales with other topics but I haven't dedicated an entire segment to sabr and this entire thing is going to be about patience. This in no way, shape, or form is everything about sabr. Sabr is such a big topic and we all have our own experiences and so many valuable lessons that we can derive from, you know, just the Quran and the prophets, peace be upon all of them. There's lots of valuable things that we can talk and say about sabr. But what I'm going to share with you is my journey on how I developed sabr. And it's an ongoing journey, like it's still going on, but how I kind of navigated through those times. But I do want to say something important in the beginning, and this is important for two reasons. One, because of course I have to say this because I'm so, you know, I just can never say thank you enough. And two, because this actually bridges into my supper story and you'll see. I genuinely want to sit here and say thank you. I know that I don't say that a lot. Like, in my, okay, well, I don't know. I feel like I just, I don't sit here on my podcast and I'm like, hey guys, like, thank you so much for like, you know, this, this many numbers or like this many views and plays overnight on this and like this many falls. Or like, I just don't because, okay, like I'm so eternally grateful and I catch up on those things. Like I see them, you know, like when series drop and stuff like that. It's just sometimes like I'm mind blown and I'm just staring and I'm like, how, what even? Like, I'm just like, this is insane. Like never in a million years did I see any of that happening, right? And I'm so grateful for the support I get. But I don't like to... I just feel like it makes me sound like everyone else. Like, I sound so cliche when I sit here and I'm like, oh my god, guys, I'm so grateful. And then y'all are just like, uh, skip segment. Six, uh, skip, skip. She's going on a tangent. Because, like, every content creator or, like, whatever you want to call them has, like, they talk about how grateful they are. Um, and it sounds cliche every time. <laughs> and it's just, I don't want to sound cliche, but... It's truly insane because I look at, you know, the way that stuff is now with the podcast and just with everything, like never in a million years did I ever see myself talking at some of the places that I have talked at. Never in a million years did I see any of the doors opening that have opened for me through this. And I have absolutely zero say or zero praise in this. It is all to Allah, alhamdulillah. And so I am very, very grateful for this. I don't say it often because I don't like to sound cliche, but I don't think y'all even know. Like I, I wake up every morning and I do like a squeal because it's so surreal to me. I know I sound so cliche. I'm sorry, but it really is. Like when I check, you know, what are y'all saying or I go through my DMs, like just, oh my God, like it's, I feel like, oh my goodness, I don't even know what to say. The reason why so much of this means so deeply to me is actually relating back to sabr what i talk about on here is a lot about my emotions experiences or stuff that happened to me that got me to a point or whatever 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 right and so lessons learned wisdom earned whatever and when i remember in my life when i was going through those things in my mind i felt an immense amount of just exhaustion like just tiredness just bitterness if you want me to be truthful because you know people make sabr seem like okay happy dally i'm sad someday but i'm getting up and i'm trying again and but they don't talk about that side where it just you just feel bitter like as a human being like you just don't want to deal with anything or anyone and a lot of my time was kind of spent like that where i came to terms that this was a situation that required sabr and i came to terms that oh i need to keep sabr and whatever 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 but i was just so mentally thrown off by everything because for me the situation came to be that i kind of felt like and i've shared my story on here a lot before so if you're new and this is like the first podcast of mine that you're listening to um if you like it you can totally check out my other ones but you don't have to but um i've talked about my story and stuff like that on here before but one of the things about sabr and about life and about lessons and about pain that just threw me off the wrong way was okay i go through this 
Okay, I learned the lesson, but now what am I supposed to do about this? Because, okay, I get it, I learned the lesson, I shouldn't have done this, or I made a bad decision, and I get it, I learned the lesson, I won't do it again, but now I got it. I got the lesson, I just want this test to end. I don't want to deal with this anymore, I don't want to hear about this anymore, I don't want to think about this anymore, I don't want to wake up in the morning and think about this, I don't want to sleep and think about this, I got the lesson. I got the moral out of this. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. You know, because a lot of times in life, we go through tests and trials and they teach us something. Sometimes it's our own fault. Sometimes, you know, we get tested. Regardless, tests are a sign that Allah loves us. And I knew that it was a sign that Allah loves us, but sometimes I just felt so exhausted because first of all, in the first place, I never felt like I was good enough to be loved by God. Second, I always felt like an immense amount of just like, tiredness because it was okay i got the lesson i got the moral now low-key i'm super depressed and i can't get out of it and i learned the lesson but i just wish i would have learned in a different way or now i'm sad because i know that i got the lesson i realized my wrongs but now i have like this whole journey ahead of me where i have to heal and fix myself and i have to keep subbing and be patient with myself and all of this could have been avoided if i just never made that decision in the first place or i was never put into this in the first place so much hindsight so much just anger anger and may Allah protect us because it's one thing to be angry at people that's very dangerous and you should avoid that at all costs you know as a muslim your characteristics and your mannerism is a very big part of your faith you should try to avoid being angry at people and you know saying stuff out of anger but no one talks about the anger that you feel within yourself the anger that just gets you so angry and so raged that you just you feel disappointed in yourself and it's not your fault so many things so many things that happened to you they weren't your fault you couldn't control them but it's like an immense amount of anger just this boiling bitterness that is just so much because you've gotten hurt so much and when you meet people that are a little bit reserved and are a little bit you know types of ways and they're just not so opening you just open and out there in the beginning you know we tend to look at them we think oh they're stuck up what we don't know is that some people are just so generally tired that waking up in the morning is an accomplishment for them and i understand that in the sphere of talking about this world and how you know there's goals and accomplishments and as people becoming rich and famous and successful and the people are doing this and doing that and like every corner you turn everyone's sharing their successes but i've noticed that lots of successful people are just as much bitter on the inside right nothing wrong with being successful nothing wrong with that but there's no doubt that that bitterness that comes over time from being patient that sometimes you just feel like it's driving you insane because it's just kind of so it's just it's like anger within yourself like you want to forgive yourself and some days you wake up and you say i have forgiven myself i'm cool i've moved on and i understand that i did the best that i could have in that moment i've i've forgiven myself but then some days you wake up and you just want you're so you're so angry at yourself that you just don't even know what to say you just feel an immense amount of rage because how could you do this to yourself? You know, all those feelings, I, I know someone's going to get it. Now, those are just some emotions to list out when we talk about it. And of course, there's lots of other experiences. But throughout my years, there were five things that I learned that I'm still learning and I'm still drilling in my brain. But these were things that over time, from listening to different lectures, reading different Quran ayahs, doing different tafsirs or learning about different prophets' lives or just whatever, 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 five things that stood out to me and really spoke to my emotions. Is this the best five things that you can collect ever in the face of the planet? Absolutely not. But these are five things that at the age that I'm at, really spoke to me. These are lessons that I have been learning for years. These may sound simple on the surface, but I want you to write these five things down as we go through this episode, whether it's like on a paper, like in your notes or whatever, write it down. These five things I always remind myself of when I'm in a hard time or when I have to deal with, you know, a situation and whatever, I refer back to these five things in my mind. These are concepts that I'm still drilling. I'm 18 now and I'm still drilling some of these things in my brain. So this is going to be a long journey. And if matter of fact, it might be a journey of your lifetime. But these are things that over time will bring you ease and help you become better at what you do. So inshallah, I hope you guys like the five things that I have to share and hopefully can help you. So here's number one. 
Sabar is a choice and a part of your lifestyle. Sometimes you will feel this choice more than others, but sometimes it will feel passive. So let me explain this. So one of the things that I had to learn in my life is you know how people, they always say, oh, you have to bear patience and hardship and you have to have patience. And, you know, when hard times come upon you, you need to have sabar and whatever, 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 100%, right? But I think what a lot of people won't tell you is that your entire journey on this dunya is of sabar. Because the reality is in this world, you are here to work, do, do good deeds, worship Allah, do what you got to do to get to Jannah. We are all, and this is going to be dark, but I'm being for real. Me and you are alive waiting, doing what we need to do, trying to live our best lives and of course branch out and strive for excellence and, you know, be good people, do good things, learn new things, do good deeds. But the reality is me and you only have till the time that we die, which means that we already have acknowledged the fact that when I die, that this is the end of this. What seems like the death on the dunya of the end of everything is actually the beginning of your true life to come, what is really going to matter, because this dunya does not matter. Allah has given even the disbelievers the best of the things on this dunya, but the ahirat and the deen is something that Allah has preserved for Muslims. It's something He's chosen for the believers. So while death on this earth might seem like the all and be all, it's actually just the beginning for your new segment, for everything in the ahirat to come. And between the time of when we're born and the time that we're gonna die, unfortunate reality, it's just a time of sabr. We're trying our best to do good deeds, get out of hardships, stay on the right path. Every single day, there's going to be something that's going to be thrown your way that might tank you down. You're going to have stresses of life every day. You're going to have a new hardship every other month. You're going to feel sad or a type of way all the time. There's always going to be something that's going to happen. You're going to have days where you feel happy and amazing. Then, you know, maybe at the end of the night, maybe you started thinking about something from the past that started tanking your feelings. Like there's always going to be an existence of negative emotions. And this concept that one day when you wake up, you're going to hit a part of your life where these negative emotions and these negative thoughts are not going to exist is unfortunately very very unfair to yourself because that's not going to happen how are you going to wake up one day in this dunya and be like okay i'm clean from negative emotions like that's not going to happen that's only for jannah when you get to jannah you reach that point where you know there's no sadness there's none of that because you bared that here for that you bared whatever you went through here for jannah and you know that. And so the reality is when you look at the grand scheme of life, it's a matter of sabr. We are all patient because we all want Jannah. So my entire journey on this earth is of patience. And so patience is a part of my lifestyle. Patience is not a decision that I make just in hardship. Patience is an active choice that I have to wake up and make every single day patience is not just okay this time i'm in a hardship i choose patience hardships over i'm done being patient no because in the nature of things in my opinion as a whole we are all here for what to do good deeds to get to jannah and in this process you're going to go through a lot of crap and you're not going to have good days and you're not going to be happy all the time but it's all a matter of patience to getting to that end point so me and you collectively whether you feel it or not we are all going through patience some of us aren't good at being patient we tend to you know go crazy and act out and do haram and that's a whole other thing because at that point you know when you have fallen and let yourself get into the haram lifestyle and you just don't even care about the deen anymore then that's a different discussion because in that point in my opinion you know when the dunya becomes your main priority and you don't care about the ahirat at all and you know maybe you don't even care about being muslim you don't care about islam you're not praying like the deen does not matter to you then okay you've chosen the dunya your time okay that's you right allah knows best about you and your decisions and your choices i'm not i'm i don't know right but if you've genuinely prioritized the dunya over the deen and you've said that okay this is my choice i can't you know sit here and pray five times a day and do good deeds just for this jannah i'm tired i want to go live my best life you've chosen that then that is what you will get go ahead and go 
Okay, but the reality is Allah knows best and inshallah may Allah guide you back. But some people, they choose that. But for people like me and you are, you know, trying our best, inshallah may Allah accept it from us. If you are a Muslim who's trying to prioritize this deen over the dunya, you have collectively made the decision that I'm going to now put patience in my lifestyle because you know that you can sit here and do instant gratification and get involved in haram and live the life of what you want now. But instead, you decide to put sabr in your lifestyle and in your patience and just in your patience I'm sorry, and in your nature to get to a point of where you'll get to Jannah. I really hope that made sense. But as a Muslim, when you're trying your best, and even if you're someone who's feeling like, oh, I'm not doing good enough, but I'm trying my best to pray and I'm trying my best to do this, like you're trying to do, you know, your best in everything. And that's basically all of us. We are all trying. This concept that I one day I'm going to wake up and be a perfect Muslim is false. We are all trying and Jannah is filled with people who sin and then they repent and then they try their best and they stay close to Allah and that's what you need however for some people when they sin it pushes them so far that they decide that I'm not gonna even I'm done I'm done with this deen thing I'm not good for it reality is you're never going to be perfect for this deen you're never gonna reach this grand epiphany that oh my god I'm the best Muslim on the place of planet it's not gonna happen you're gonna keep trying and trying and trying and trying and that's the whole journey you try you try you try and Allah rewards you simply for your intentions that is why this whole intention concept in Islam is so important because if for example, you know, I decide that I want to put forth and do great things and I'm only rewarded if the great thing happens. That is so much pressure on me. What about all the sleepless, tiredless, you know, work just induced nights where I'm just going crazy and crying and, you know, I'm just going through the hardest things. What about those nights? Because the results aren't out yet. I have not gotten to that grand point yet. So am I not going to be rewarded for that? Am I not going to be rewarded for those nights? Am I only going to be rewarded for when I get there and it comes out? No. That's what Allah tells you. He rewards you for your intention. For every single little bit of what you do. For all the efforts that you make are rewarded. And if you fail and whatever you were planning on doing doesn't come out the way that you thought it would or it didn't work out, it's cool. That's fine. You still got rewarded for trying. You still got rewarded for the intention. So remember that this whole journey on this life, on this dunya, is a choice of patience. And a lot of us, the reason why patience is so hard to master is because it's not a one-time decision. Patience is not something you wake up and pick in your hardship and you say, okay, well, I'm going to just sit here in the four walls of my room and be patient. No, because patience hurts. And patience is something that you have to do every single little day when you don't even want to be alive, but you are alive because you know that in the end, inshallah, here, Allah will grant you Jannah. We see patience through... Maria Mela be pleased with her. When we see the things that she goes through and when she had Isa Mela be pleased with him, when it happened the way that it happened, we see in that moment she wanted nothing more than to just be gone. We see that in that moment she's just so overwhelmed and it's so many emotions that we can't even think to even feel. And when we read this one particular ayat of the Quran, which is 1923, like this ayah really hits home. And the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She said, oh, I wish I had died before this and was in oblivion forgotten. Like generally sit here and think about that. The moment that everything went down, this is what she was feeling. And we see how in the Quran, this emotion is not even something that we can put words to because of the immense amount of just pain and just just so much that she's feeling in that moment. But the reality is as much as it hurts, and of course that I have in particular really like we can't even imagine the emotions she's feeling, not only did her sabr bring, you know, obviously Jesus, peace be upon him, Isa, as we say it, um, her sabr is something that we talk about today, till this day. And the reality is as much as that hurt it, you know, at that time, look at it today. She, her patience, not only was Isa al-Islam born, Jesus, but her sabr is something that we talk about even today. Uh, Allah knew. Allah knew all of this all along, right? And so remember that sabr is not just a choice that you have to make one time. Sometimes, Patience feels like a much bigger and harder choice because in that moment, there's nothing that can get you out of it besides patience. Y'all know how people like to say, oh, time heals. Whenever I used to hear that, it may, I was like, stop. 
Because for me, I'm the type of person that I want to do something to fix it. I don't like to sit here and argue about things. Tell me the solution. Let's fix things. And when it comes to your emotions and you are trying to fix something that isn't necessarily in your control, that is when you learn that time is the thing that fixes everything. Because at the end of the day, you keep sabr and Allah, inshallah, it will guide you to what's right and whatever, whatever, whatever. But in that moment, when people tell you that, oh, as time goes by, you'll be happy, you know, your time will come. It's like, when will my time come? When will my time of being happy come? And it's just, it, it was so frustrating to hear. But I can guarantee you that your time does come. Because at the end of the night, whether you feel like it or right, you, whether you feel it or not, like whether it's in this life or the next, there is going to be something that's going to open up new doors for you, inshallah. Sometimes in life, all you need is a fresh start. And a lot of fresh starts actually come from very damaged and broken endings. And you need the broken ending to get to a better fresh start. Because what some people do is they take old things into fresh starts and make the fresh thing old again. Some days you won't even feel sabr. Life will be great. But some days you'll feel it more than others. But regardless, understand that this is something that's going to be a part of your life. Especially when you want to worship the deen and care about Allah and whatnot even more. Okay, number two. You need to understand that now is different than before. So what does this mean? A lot of times in my life, I used to think about the things that I went through and I was like, oh, I went through something so bad before like that. And oh, this is nothing compared to that situation. But why can't I get out of it? What happens is sometimes in life, you go through very, very big traumatic hardships and big situations that might have lasted like two years. And now you're going through something that might seem like on a smaller scale. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm so resilient. I know how to get out of this. I'm fine. Like I can handle this. But why am I feeling so emotional? Why am I finding it so hard to have sabr? Why am I finding it so hard to not cry myself to sleep? Like, why is it so much more harder this time? And one of the biggest things that I used to do to myself every time was this. I used to say to myself, well, Hera, don't you remember what happened to you when you were 15 or when you were 16? Now you're 18. You shouldn't sit here and have a hard time getting out of this because if little 15, 16 year old you could get out of it and that was the worst thing that ever happened to you, you now can definitely handle this. But what had happened was over time, I felt like I was dismissing the way that I felt by saying that I should have been more resilient because I saw worser. But the reality is in life, the more worse you see and as you heal through the traumatic you know, events of life and the hardships, you can heal, forgive, move on and be fine. But that doesn't mean you forget those things. Trials and tests in your life are there to give you wisdom to grant you good deeds, inshallah, to guide you to the right path to help you avoid making some of the mistakes you make. And you can't deny the fact that this is a very heavy and painful process. You know, healing is something we like to say can, is just, you know, universal. And it kind of is. Like, healing is a universal concept. We're all healing from something. But at one point or another, you do have to make the decision to realize that there are going to be some faults in me and be self-aware enough to know that there's going to be some things in me that is going to be a lifetime journey. And I can't sit here in a cocoon of my little bedroom wrapped up in my blanket and say that I'm going to heal for life as an excuse to not do anything, you know? And that sounds very brutal, but one point or another, you're going to have to step out of the healing journey and acknowledge that I have things I need to fix. I'm going to work on them, but I'm also going to work on getting ahead, like moving on now. And so the thing is, when you come to that point where you do step out of it and you are a lot more, you know, like ready to take on the world and get ones to be done done, when you do go through things, sometimes even if they might seem little compared to what you went through before, it still hurts because at the end of the day, you saw worse and it's not like you forgot what happened. Happen. And as time goes on, a lot of these trials make your heart very, very soft and it makes your heart very, very, you know, vulnerable and more easier to get hurt. So sometimes what you might think is the effect of this hardship in the moment hurting me, for sometimes it hurts even more because of your, you know, previous experiences and what happened before, which is why sometimes when people go through things, you know, it could be something that's super, super small, but you view it as very big because people have other unhealed issues that are compiling behind. So sometimes life won't give you the chance to heal and you'll just have more things and more things and more things thrown on you. And you'll just feel like it's a lot at once. And even if you have healed, you need to understand that it's okay. It's okay if you went through worse and now you're going through something that's not as bad, but you're still having a hard time. 
yes, you've seen worse. And I always like to use that to support myself, not in a way of degrading myself, because that's what I used to do. I used to degrade myself and say, oh, you saw worse than this. Why are you acting out? Why are you crying? Why are you being sad? Come on, like, get your act right. Now I tell myself that if I saw worse then, I was so young then, I didn't know better then, and I could get out of it, and Allah helped me then, indeed, Allah's going to help me now. Allah's promise is never false. Allah will help me now. And if little me can get out of it, I can get out of it. This is the whole point of life. Allah will never put you through something that he knows you can't get out of. When Allah says he doesn't burden a soul more than it can bear, that means Allah knows your capacity. He knows what you're capable of. And right now, while this little thing might feel big on you, you might be even more angry at yourself, or you might just be going through the biggest, worst thing right now that's ever happened to you. Regardless of how much of you thinks that I can't get through it, you a thousand percent can and when you realize that you a thousand percent can and remember that the ayat of where Allah says that you know he doesn't burden a soul more than it can bear is not just about your day-to-day -day life but also about the fact that when you're getting pressed down in hardship you need to believe in this with your full heart not only to Jeff the wakil of Allah all the time and you should always you know keep firm faithful heart whatnot but in these moments the most, you need to look at this ayat from beyond the surface. From beyond the, oh Allah doesn't burden anyone more than can bear. You need to look at this deeper. You need to realize that right now, what I'm thinking as like the biggest crisis of my life is bearable. Because Allah knows my capacity. And so he knows I can get out of it. And if Allah put this on me, knowing I can get out of it, shows me that since again, Allah's promise is never false and he says he doesn't burden anyone more than it can bear, I can get out of this. I have to do my end. I try my best. I leave my trust up to Allah. Leave it up to Allah. But this mindset that I can't get out of it, it's not going to be possible. It's not going to work. It's only pushing you down. Because if Allah knows you can and Allah wouldn't burden you more than you can bear, whether it's different from last time, new this time, the biggest crisis or something small, you, you will get out of it and you'll be fine. I promise. Okay? Okay. I know that this is a lot of once. That's why I told you to write it down, but I get it. I can be overstimulating, but while we're talking, I want to take this moment to thank the Muslima Collection for sponsoring this episode. The Muslima Collection is truly unique, not just because their clothing is like high in quality and it's, it's affordable, it's really nice, but 100% of their proceeds go to charity. And when I found this out, I was like, whoa, like they work separate on the side and this is something that they do. The commitment's so beautiful, mashallah, but they have donated over $300,000 since their inception, created 15 wells in Uganda, 50 homes in Syria, relief camps in Syria, and over 100,000 kilos of relief aid all over the world. All while providing like beautiful clothing. Their online shop, I have the link in all my social medias. It's on my link treats in my bio. They have like jilbabs, abayas, hijabs, dopes, even have clothing for kids, which I know that lots of online stores don't specialize in, but they have clothing for kids. It's beautiful. Their link is everywhere on my social media. I 10 out of 10 recommend you to check them out. You can get some beautiful clothing while also giving sadaqah and helping people around the world. So may Allah bless them for that. Let's move on to the next tip. Okay, number three, when it feels the easiest to let go and the hardest to hold on, I have to choose to hold on because that means my relief is near. So to explain this a little bit, there's going to come times when you were holding on for so long that you're so emotionally tired that you just want to go back to what you used to do. Sometimes the haram lifestyle looks more easier to you instead of holding on. Maybe you come from a haram lifestyle and you just want to go back. You just want to go back to the person you loved, go back doing the haram things that you did. You're through with all of this. You're through with, you know, trying to take the high end and be a bigger person and you're through with trying to be nice to people that are harsh to you and you're through with this whole healing thing and it all hurts and you just you're done like it just feels like mentally physically emotionally you're getting nowhere and this is the most crucial point where you have to hold on like if you've come this far i promise you you can hold on some more and i tell myself this so often when i'm in a hardship because if i was patient for all of this time and now it's getting rough if i held on then i need to hold on now because i know that my relief is near indeed with hardship it comes ease and by hardship we have never said that it is the biggest grandest hardship hardship is hardship which means that your reward comes from Allah. You're going to be rewarded for anything and everything regardless, inshallah, for the hardship. And as long as you try your best. But if you held on for so long, 
and you embrace this path of the deen and you saw the good, you saw the bad, you saw how letting go of some of the haram things that you've done or let's say you didn't get what you wanted and you're starting to understand the wisdom behind Allah's plan but it just feels overwhelming. Like if you've held on for so long, why not hold on for longer? Why not? Like if you've if you've done it and you've held on and it's been months or years and now it's all starting to feel more pressurizing and it's hurting more and I know it's not easy but again some days you will feel the decision of patience more than others and you need to install this in your mindset so when time comes and you're thinking oh I'm gonna let go I'm done I'm through with everything I'm leaving everything here and I'm not doing it no more you remember that some days you're going to feel patience more than others And when you understand that today I might be feeling it more, this week I might be feeling it more, maybe even this month I'm feeling this more, inshallah over time it will become more subtle and it'll become more calm. But just because I feel it now and it's hurting me now, I can't let it go. I can't give up now because if I've done it for so long, I can go on for longer. And when you also remember that Allah knows your capacity, when it feels the hardest to hold on and you feel like you're being stretched a thousand directions, remember that this is what truly brings resilience into your life. You remember these moments when you were sitting there in your closet, bawling your eyes out, thinking that you don't even want to live anymore. You remember those moments. And those moments, when you choose to heal from them, are the moments that heal generations and it heals yourself and it heals so much more to come. And I know that you have that strength in you because Allah has put this upon you because he knows you can handle it. And I know right now in the moment, the only thing you want is to just not experience this anymore. But I like to use those days as a remembrance of the fact that, okay, I'm definitely near. The hardship, inshallah, is going to end soon. And again, to remind myself that some days you will feel patience more than others. Back to rule one, that some days patience will just seem passive. You won't even notice it. And then some days you'll feel it more than others. But just because you're feeling it now more than before doesn't mean you give it up as a whole. Okay? Okay. Now, number four, my patience can grow trees with fruits that will not just benefit me today, but benefit the world around me in this life and in the next. So let me explain this. Your reward for sabr is unmatched. It is not something that's set in stone. Allah says that he will give you the reward of sabr and that could be endless. The reward of sabr, like we are told the reward for certain things, right? But the reward of sabr is just, it's left open. Because Allah knows how much of a, you know, this is a different journey for everybody. How much wavering it is among everyone. How difficult it is for everyone. For some people, it's a little bit more easier than others. For some, it's more difficult regardless of whatever it is. The reward for patience is immense. And we're told that Allah is with the patient. It was narrated in Al-Buhari that whoever persists in being patient, Allah will make him patient. And nobody can be given a blessing better and greater than patience. So this thing right now that is just eating you up and you're just like, I can't go on, is one of the biggest blessings you can ever receive. And if you are trying your best to be patient, Allah will help you and Allah will make you patient. And this also refers back to that concept where we say how Allah is not going to change the condition of someone if they change the condition of themselves, unless they change the condition of themselves. So we see that here. We see how when you put the action forth, inshallah, Allah helps you. It is also said in 39.10 of the Quran, only those who are patient shall receive their reward in full without hisab. So no limit, no calculation, no estimation, just it's it's out there. And that is so big if you think about it because sabr, like I said, is a concept that is drilled and, you know, throughout our life. And for that, Allah has saved a very, very big reward for us. The reason why I say that your patience can grow trees and fruits and benefit you and other people in this life and the next is because when you are patient and you have that drive in you, that anger or those emotions and all of this that I just want to give up and I can and I don't want to and this, this, that, like you're feeling all of this. When you take that and you channel it into a good place, you are building something through, you know, the hardship of you being patient that is going to benefit you and other people. 
For example, and this is again where what I talked about in the beginning comes in. My podcast was created at a time where I was near just done, like through with everything, right? And through those emotions and never wanting to be known and never wanting to tell anyone anything, I was like, listen, I'm going to pull a very, very dramatic move and make a podcast and like no one will know right for a hot minute and then obviously like now it's the norm but everyone knows now but um in the beginning it was like ain't nobody know i'm gonna sit here and just vent out my life out and talk about my problems and just alleviate my heart and help other people and show the people what helps me the advice that i gave out at that time was advice that i needed to hear more and the advice that I gave out at that time was more for me before it's for anyone else. And when I found out people were listening to it, I was like, oh crap, like I got caught. But <laughs> it was more for me to just put out there. And so the time that I spent sitting there, scheduling out my day, saying, okay, I'm going to make a podcast. I'm going to record this today. This is my script. This is my like rough idea, what I'm going to talk about. Sitting there, editing the audio. And then, okay, now let me make some cover art for this, getting the cover art and then posting it, then promoting it on socials. Like, you know, again, like just doing, 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 doing. It started to take up a good portion of my day where I started investing those, you know, those feelings that I had for myself into something better. And then over time, those emotions that once literally broke me down and burned my insides, planted trees in my life that I never thought I could have. Cliche. Shut up. I don't care. Okay? Listen, let me tell you how much I love y'all. And um, it literally planted trees in my life that benefit not just me every day because I love what I do, but also help other people. To know that you saved someone else's life is the most insane thing. And when I receive DMs like that, I'm just like, are you sure you're DMing the right person? Like, for me, like, it's, it doesn't ever get old. Like, it always seems insane every time I read those things. And I think about how when I needed my life, quote, quote, you know, help the most and save the most and whatever you want to call it, I took that, those emotions, just that raging, just exhaust, like, it, just tiredness of life, that exhaustion. And through that, in this podcast, and it planted trees for me, those same things that burnt my inside that I kept Sabaru with planted trees for me, that today I'm so grateful that I hope that the fruits of those trees benefit not just me in this life and in the Ahirat, but also benefit you guys. So everyone who takes something and it helps them and it helps them become better people, then they pass it on, it helps us all. I saw a very interesting thing, a video about this, and I want to talk about it. People think changing the world is hard. But changing the world starts off with changing one person's life because every one individual changes 10 people's lives. And if those 10 people change another 10 people's lives, it multiplies. So a lot of people have this perception that they can't change the world or that they can't change a community and they can't help people. And it's true to a degree that obviously you're not going to be able to change every single human being on the continent. No one's saying that. But changing a lot is not that difficult as you think it might be. Because in average, speaking from a statistics point, of view it has been studied that one person at least changes the life of 10 people and if you change the life of 10 people and those 10 people change the life of another 10 people and those 10 people change the life of another 10 people you were the beginning and it goes on and on and on and on and on and then you've changed generations so the fruit that someone eats from today basically the knowledge or the advice that someone took and it helped them today could be something that they pass on to other 10 people who pass it on to their kids who pass it on to their family members who pass it on to their friends who pass it on to this who pass it on to that and it benefits and helps you in this life because inshallah here like you know that advice helped you it gave you comfort but all this passing inshallah here i pray sadaqa jariya for all of us which is why i like to make my platform more like a group project yeah i sit here and record i do all of this but having people reshare it or tell me that they're telling their friends about it makes me so happy because you are initially helping me spread it even more. And then now it's like a whole group thing. And inshallah, like this testifies Sadiq Ajari and goodness for all of us on the Day of Judgment, for every single person that's helped me grow it, whether that was like through Instagrams and reshares or like just supporting me and whatever, whatever, whatever. I pray that this is something that helps all of us in the end. 
So it doesn't necessarily even have to be a podcast or a social account. If you are someone who's going through, you know, these rough feelings of patience and one day you decide to show up in the masjid and you see someone crying, you see someone hurt, or you see one of your girlfriends there, and y'all start talking about your problems and you see that she's going through the same thing that you're going through. And if you can give her advice that can change her life and help her feel better, think about what she's going to do with that. And every single time she's about to cry, she can think about what you told her. Then she can pass that thing on if it helps her heal and whatnot to other people and help other people. So your patience, what you think is literally burning you inside, could be taken and planted into the most beautiful trees that will grow for generations, grow fruits and help people and change people's lives. How you invest your pain says everything. Some people take their pain, invest it in haram, and use it as an excuse every single day to continue to do haram, to drink, to hang out with the wrong people, to get in haram relationships, and say, well, I got hurt. God did this to me. On that same note, God tells us that tests and trials are a blessing. So you can also be that person who takes all this pain and says, I know that Allah gives me tests and trials as a blessing. So I'm going to take this blessing and bless other people. Because as much as a blessing might not feel like it in the moment, because as we know, we may love something and Allah knows it's bad for us and vice versa. As much as it might not feel amazing in the moment, I can take this, channel it somewhere and help other people use my pain in a greater purpose and a greater cause and invest in a better place. And I'm also going to share a very, very unfortunate but real reality that no one's going to tell you because people don't like to admit this because people don't want to come off as quote, quote, stupid. But I'm going to tell you the truth. There were some things in my life that I had to go through not once, not two times, not three times, not four times, sometimes even five times to actually learn the lesson and actually realize that the first time it happened, what Allah told me was right. That the second time when I thought that I could make it different, it wasn't going to be different. That the third time when I went in thinking that I knew better than God did, I did not. The fourth time going in when I thought that I had it under control and I wasn't going to make the same mistakes I made the first few times, I indeed did. And the fifth time coming to terms with the fact that it's not going to be different. And when Allah tells me something, I have to listen. Or when Allah teaches me a lesson previously, I better listen to it. I'm telling you the truth. Call me a fool. I don't care. I'll admit it. There were times in my life where I made foolish decisions, stupid decisions. I'm, I don't care. Like I've, I've grown from them. I'm mature now. And I've, I've understood that. I made some dumb decisions. Like it's okay. I laugh about it now. I was stupid. I made some choices that weren't good. I have come to terms with that. But ironically, the harsh truth is, This is going to be very dark, but ironically, I had to watch myself die over and over and over again to understand how to actually live. Because throwing myself in situations which literally killed my inside and made me incapable of going on and making me have trust issues and, you know, just breaking every bit of me, I had to watch myself just deteriorate over and over and over again and sit on floors crying and bawling my eyes out and just wanting to not go on anymore to actually understand what it means to be alive, to actually understand what it means to truly love yourself. Because I was always told wrong perceptions of love. I was always told wrong perceptions of self-love. And I realized that self-love, like I always say, is more of making the right decisions. And I had to watch myself sit there, ballistically bawl my eyes out till my eyes were swollen and I couldn't breathe to realize that what I decisions that I made for myself thinking that I was all big bad and smart were actually killing me every single day and until I realized that every single part of my body was screaming for me to stop that is when it was going to get better and when I truly started listening to myself and I truly started listening to the pains of my body to the point that I physically started getting so sick from all the things that I was going through that I realized that I was I was literally doing it to myself. I I admit it. I admit it. Because people are not going to admit this part. They're going to try to blame it on other people. I was stupid. I made some really bad choices. Not necessarily things that are, you know, haram or anything. Like, just certain decisions and choices that, like, I learned the lesson the first time. And I still did it. Like, I would still do it. Because I thought I knew better. It doesn't need, again, like some people don't understand that not everyone goes to a haram lifestyle. Some people have their own personal experiences that they go through that you're just so adamant on the fact that it could have been different, but it's not different. And when you learn that it's not different and you have to watch yourself die over and over again on the hands of this concept that it's going to be different, 
that is when you learn to live. When you learn that I am doing this to myself and I take full acknowledgement of that and I always will and I always take accountability for that. I did it to myself because if I learned the lesson the first time and I shut up and kept on going and didn't act like a fool thinking I knew better, I wouldn't be in those positions. I know that. Now, there were some things in my life that weren't in my control. There are some traumas and things that you're going to go through that are not in your control. We've all been through them. The things that are not in my control, they're not in my control. How? Why should I beat myself up over those things? The things that I did have control over, I made foolish decisions. I was stupid. I did some wrong things. I chased things that I shouldn't have or I didn't understand Allah's wisdom behind those things. Okay. Okay, I, I I understand. I learned the lesson. I took accountability. But that doesn't mean I'm going to sit here and blame myself and hate myself every single day. Hindsight is one of the worst things that you can fall into because hindsight is going to make you think that you're a failure for the rest of your life because you made stupid decisions six years ago when six years ago, your little capacity thought that this is going to be the best thing that I can ever do to myself. Why did I do some things over and over again? Because I constantly thought that it would end up better the next time. No one willingly throws themselves in the face of of death in the face of wanting to get themselves hurt over and over again in the face of wanting to watch their soul get crushed no one does that willingly everyone does it because they imagine it to be different and when you realize that in that capacity that's what you thought would be best and it wasn't best and yes maybe it wasn't the best decision it wasn't the best capacity now you're older you're mature you've moved on and you know you're not going to do that again and i haven't i haven't done those things again and i'm very careful when it comes to making decisions if i see that allah has taught me a lesson through something or someone one time it ain't about to happen again i'm not going to repeat the decision because i know that allah's clarity I, it's not my job to read as confusion. When Allah gives you clarity, look at it as clarity. Don't look at it as confusion. The longer you look at it as confusion, as, oh, well, maybe that's not what God's trying to tell me. No, you know exactly what's going on. And you are gaslighting yourself. So you can take all those things and decide that you want to watch yourself die over and over again and not want to live. Or you can take those things and plant it into something amazing and help and bless other people. Helping other people, even scientifically proven, helps yourself. And that was how I began so much of what I do. I wanted help. And I knew that I would I would call out to Allah so much, just begging for help and healing to the point that I would get tired of even making that dua. Being very honest, I would get so exhausted of making dua sometimes that I wouldn't even say it. Like I just, it was in my heart and I knew Allah knew that. But you should never get tired of making dua. You should constantly ask Allah for something. And so I did. I still kept going. I still kept asking him. And through that journey, I created this, which Alhamdulillah, I did nothing in this. Honestly, it was all Allah's rahmah. But through his mercy... I was able to have this where now I feel like just I feel so much more lighter because I feel like I did something with something that once weighed me heavy and can now on Alhamdulillah inshallah like be lighter on other people. Sis, this was a dark episode. Y'all don't need to be knowing me like that. I mean, of course, like there's some things I talk about and then some things that like you guys will just never know. Because again, like there's just things that are just, you know, whatever. Okay, number five, last one. My sabr has no limit on reward. This was something I want to repeat. My sabr has no limit on reward. Sometimes we think, okay, so I'm just going to go to Jannah. Okay, I was patient and... No, no, no. Jannah is far beyond what me and you can imagine, what me and you can think, what our eyes can imagine, what our hearts can imagine. My reward for being patient, your reward for being patient has no limit. Okay, Allah is so merciful that that's why we're also told, look at it, how sabr is the greatest blessings that we can ever have. Because with this great blessing comes so many more in the future. We hear and we see so much about patience that Allah is with the patient. And generally think about that. Like, well, when you sit here thinking, I feel the most alone and no one in this entire world understands me, Allah understands you. And if Allah understands you, you need nothing more than that. It was narrated in a very, very beautiful hadith by Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, The example of a believer is that of a fresh, tender plant. From whatever direction the wind comes, it bends it. But when the wind becomes quiet, it becomes straight again. Similarly, a believer is afflicted with calamities, but he remains patient till Allah removes his difficulties. And an impious, wicked person is like a pine tree, which keeps hard and straight till Allah cuts slash breaks it down when he wishes. And this was in Sahih Bukhari uh five six four four yeah that reason why i read you this i think that this is this is beautiful 
Patience and life and everything is very much the same. You're going to have lots of times where you have planted yourself in the ground and you're growing and you're nourishing and the winds are going to come and you just going to be going left to right, swaying, going all crazy. But when you have root yourself with the deen and Islam and you understand that Allah is going to be with you through thick and thin and you've, you've nurtured these values in you, you know that your roots, no matter how strong the wind is, are stronger. Than that you know that your roots are forever going to be more deeper and stronger and nourish through Allah's mercy and through constantly going on this path of the deen that no matter what wind comes no matter what the dunya throws at you you will be fine because your deep roots your beginnings are from a place and from a deen and from a religion that cannot be overtaken by anything Okay, besties. So that's my five tips. Um, this episode was very serious. I usually joke around a lot, but besties, this is serious. I did not come to play in this one. Okay, but I hope you guys like this episode. Um, I love feedback. I really appreciate it. So let me know if you like this and if this helped you in any way, inshallah. Um, if it did, I recommend writing those five things down and reading them every day because that always helps as well. I hope that whatever you're going through gets easier. And you channel it into something great and better. And if I say anything, anything wrong or anything.